Today, I want to talk to you about typographic scale. I am definitely not a type designer, so I don't want to pretend like I am one, but I just want to share some of the things I've been looking into to hopefully give you some value today. Let me start with this lovely quote by Picasso, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. That's what we'll be doing today. We'll look at some examples of typographic scales, especially in some design systems like the one by Google and Apple. And then I'll show you how we can create our own typographic scale. So what is a typographical scale? Essentially, it is a scale of font sizes, not only sizes, but it could be line height. It could be whether you use bold or regular, whether you use italics, whether you use different sizes of kerning. So kerning is just the spacing between the letter glyphs. So the purpose of using a typographical scale is so we can create a clear hierarchy of what is more important and what is just the regular body text. So in this instance, because everything is the same size and the same thickness, we can't really tell what is more important and what is less important. Sometimes we might use this to our advantage and cause confusion on purpose. But for this instance, because we want to be very legible, we would not do it like this. There are a few easy things that we can do to uplift our type in our designs. The first one is playing with the typographical scale. So here we can see I've created a font size for our heading one, which would just be the title of our frame. And then we have a smaller font size for heading two, but it's still in bold. So these, these are the titles of each of the paragraphs. So you can really easily see where the paragraph starts and ends. And I've enhanced this by adding more spacing. And then you can see the lowest hierarchy is in the body text. I just want to come back to this paragraph and I just want to show two things that I see a lot of young designers do. And this really makes the design look really clunky. The first one is leaving your widows. So you can see over here, this sentence doesn't really end here. So it needs to roll over to the next line. And it has only a single word in this line. So we call this a widow. And it just looks really bad because you're trying to finish the sentence, but you got to jump to the next line just to see one word. So what you want to do is maybe you just want to extend your text box to get rid of all those widows. And the second thing you can do that's really easy is just read your sentences. So for example, let's say in this one, your typographical scale, let me go hand tool, your typographical scale should be flexible enough to accommodate different content types and lengths. And it's kind of interesting that we start a new sentence here. Maybe it might be easier for the user to read if we just bring it onto the next line. So I'm gonna just hold shift return. And this really helps when you um, have different spacing types. So we can have consider creating a range of font sizes and weights that can be applied to different elements of your design. And we might want to also add another shift enter here. And I know it looks a bit different because now we have the staggering at the end instead of this nice clean line at the end. But I personally feel like this is a lot easier to read than just having your text flow along like this. Now let's jump into the brief history of typographic scale. Here is a wonderful article written by Spencer Mortensen. Essentially, he explores the classic typographic scale, which is found from the book, The Elements of Typographic Style, which was created visually uh, through a comparison of different sizes, which look harmonious. And then he compares it with the musical scale, which is based on mathematics. So you, I'm going to scroll down here. We can see here he compares these two scales together. So in red is the one that was created visually, and then the one behind is created mathematically. And you can see it's very close. And essentially he argues that we can use these musical mathematical scales to create harmonious typographical scales. So we're going to do that now. But before we do that, Let's look at some design systems and see how they've implemented the typographical scale. So the first design system I want to show you all is Material Design by Google. So this is currently M3, which is their third iteration. We can see in styles, topography, and then in typescale, we can see here 
Material Design uses the major second type scale with 14 as its key base size. This anchors to the most essential style used most often for typesetting body text. So in most websites, the body key base size is 14 or 16. And then if we scroll down here, it says here, the major second scale is 1.125. So what does that mean? So that's our multiplier number here and different scale types would have a different multiplier, which I'll show you a bit later. So because 14 is our base size, we essentially use the 14 and then we times it by 1.125 and we'll get our next number, which is 16. And we keep doing that 18, 20, 22, 25. If we get a decimal number, we'll just round it up to the closest number, 28, 32, 36, et cetera, et cetera. So here's a good thing to note. Sizes on the rendered type scale should aim to provide impactful contrast between sizes by avoiding small differences. So firstly, we're going to work out what we're actually using it for. So whether it's our title, our headline or display, and then on our scale that we've created, we want to pick which font sizes we actually want to use. So in this instance, we've using 16, 22, we skipped 25, 28, 32, 36, 40, 45, 57. And here it says, if your product likely will not need all 15 default styles, which obviously makes sense. We don't have 15 types of headings. We normally have heading one, two, three, maybe four. We'd have a body text size and then we'd have a display size. So display size is usually your fun text size. So whether you want to have a really punchy quote or when you have a landing page, you want to have a really big headline, we'd use a display font. And in this instance, essentially it's saying that this person has used 45, but they don't think it's punchy enough. So instead they can just move up to the next one in the scale, which would be 51. So here it says it's 51. So now we're jumping onto Apple's design system. And this is where it gets really interesting. So I started with Picasso's quote because I wanted to show that once you've really mastered and understood how to create really harmonious design. You can really play with that. So you can see here, this is the specification for Apple's design system. You can see their body font size is actually size 17. What a crazy font size to start with. It's like the worst prime number you can use. Then you have 20, 22, 28, 34. You can see these other crazy numbers, 16, 15, 13, 12, 11. I tried to work out what typographical scale this was based on any musical scale factors, but I couldn't find it out. But essentially what I realized is every font that you use or every typeface that you use will require a different typographical scale. So in this instance, if the typeface is naturally a bit smaller, maybe you want to have it a bit bigger to create it more accessible. And if we scroll up here to the very top, we can see the key principles that Apple uses. They want to maintain a minimum font size that people can really easily use. So with the font they're using, they have determined that 17 is the smallest it needs to be. They want to be able to adjust the font weight, size and color to emphasize importance, minimize the number of typefaces you use. So I think they use two, they have the SF Pro which would be this one, San Francisco. And then they have their um, serif font here, which is New York. They want to avoid lightweight fonts, um, fonts that are really thin and really hard to read. And they want to be able to prioritize important content. So now let's look at the different types of musical scales that we can use to start building our typographical scales. So we have these really great tools that we can access on the web. This one is by Jeremy Church, it is typescale.com. We have all the tools that we need to create our typographical scale. So we're gonna have a look at the left. We can see we can control our base size by default, it is 16. We can also change it to 14 if we want. We have different scale sizes that we can use. We can choose what font we want and the weight itself. So let's open one of these. So we can start with the largest one, which is golden ratio you can see how the contrast between each level is really strong. So this is really good if you want to create a lot of impact, 
However, when we usually do UI design, we're usually designing for the web or for the mobile app. So we actually don't have enough space to create font that's really this big. So this is why using these smaller factors is actually better for us to create more effective UI designs. So in this instance, we're gonna copy what Google had. So they had the base size of 14 and then they use the major second. So you can see here, it was 14, then 16, 18. So you can see it's not necessarily 16, but kind of rounds up to 16. Then we have 18, 20, 22. And then I think the next one was 25. So we're going to use the font Roboto just to see what it looks like. Um, I can't spell Roboto. Roboto, Roboto. Here we go. And then the weight doesn't really matter, but we can add more to our scales if we want. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And one more here. What we're going to do is we're going to copy this. So I'm using the shortcut command control shift four, and I'm going to do the screenshot capture. I think the screenshot tool for windows is windows shift S correct me if I'm wrong. So the first thing I want to do is just want to check that the scale that we created matches the one in material design. So we can see here 14 is not really here in the screenshot, but we have 16 round up to 18, 20, 22. So you can see here it starts to round down. So it's just rounding to the closest whole number, 22, 25. This one's 28, 32, yep, 36, 40, 45, 51. Perfect. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. And now we're gonna create these font sizes. So I'm gonna start by pressing T for text, and I'm just gonna type the word body. So I'm just using the font Roboto, which is what Material Design uses, regular. We're gonna build the first one, which is 57. And then for the line height, we're gonna use a 100% for now. We're gonna to have to change it a bit later. And then the letter spacing, we have 0%. So let's go ahead and create eight of these. So I'm just holding down Option and Shift to copy and then Command D or Control D if you're on Windows to duplicate that command. So we've got eight of these. And I'm gonna call the bottom one body small body. Then we have Heading three. So the lower the number, the bigger the size. Heading one. So one just means the primary. And then we can have display one, display two, and display three. Perfect. I'm just going to make it an auto layout for now. So I'm just going to right click, add auto layout, just so that I can keep them together as I'm editing them. So we have this one at 57, so I'm going to go ahead and make this one 45 and then 36, 32, 28, 22, yep, 16, and this one's 14. Okay. So here's where it gets a bit tricky because we're going to work out how do we actually edit these line heights. So the large one's a bit easy. So currently we have this weird prime number and we want to make them all even. So we follow this eight pixel grid and we use eight pixels because it's easy to divide by. So eight and you halve that is four, half that is two. But if we start with 10 and then you halve that is five, half that is 2.5, that's a bit really odd which is why I find the Apple design system really interesting that they decided to start with 17. So we can actually fix this with the line height. So what we want to do is we want to go, normally we have um, additional eight pixels for large fonts. So we'll just go 57 plus eight and we can just round it. We'll round it down to 64 because that's divisible by eight. And then this one, we want to do the same thing. So we do 45 plus eight. 53, so to get a number divisible by eight, you wanna have 56, 56 or 52. So that's divisible by four. 
And this is not no perfect science, but essentially this is the way that you can get really nice numbers. So 32, so well, this one would be 40. 28 plus 8 would be 36. 22 plus 8 is 30. And sometimes you might even want to use numbers that you've already used. So here in this instance where it says it's 30, I might even want to use 32. So what that means is I can actually align it with the next one and it kind of feels more proportionate. But for now, we'll just leave it at 30 for this body text. We can make it, let's just make it 22. And then all the ones under 16, I normally just make 16. Or we can actually make it the same as this one. So let's just make it, let's just make it 22. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is edit the kerning. So this one is very hard to do if you're not a type designer, but this is more of just something visual that you want to do. So with smaller text, usually you have them um, as is. I normally just leave it at 0% because it doesn't honestly really matter. When you get bigger, you can see how it's a bit more um, spread apart. So you can just play with it, whatever you want. Maybe you want it even more spread apart, or maybe you want it less. I normally just play with it until I feel quite comfortable with what it is. For this instance, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to leave them all at zero. So now I want to make the bold version. So you can see this text is already laid out really perfectly. And this one is 64 in height because of the line height here. So with this order layout, I'm just going to make it just a bit bigger. So I'm just going to make it 100. Well, that's a bit too big. 80. Now I'm going to scroll out. So I'm going to ungroup it to get rid of the order layout. And I'm just going to copy everything down. So with this, I'm going to make now a bold version. So we can use bold, but I feel like it's too harsh. So I'm just going to use the semi bold. And then you can see here, there's now a duplicate of the name. So I can do bulk rename with command R. So I want to keep the current name, but then I want to add a space and then I want to add the word bold. And there we have it. We've created all our text sizes. And the last thing we want to do is just use our plugin to create them into text styles. So we can go here in our resources, plugins, and we want to go text style generator. So we go run, generate text styles. You can see all our styles were created. We have 16 text styles created. If I deselect everything, so I'm not, not selecting anything anymore, I can see all my textiles are created. And then obviously, if you want to make more adjustments, you can do that. But there you go. So hopefully that was really useful for you. Again, I'm not a type designer. So if I said anything that was wrong, feel free to correct me. I'm happy to learn as well. But this was more of a informative video. If you kind of like these videos more than just showing you what to do in Figma, let me know in the comments and I can start building more videos like this. But that's all for now. Stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.